Cool. Well, so um, I thought I would talk today about a, um, a nice project that some of the, uh, the people in our team have been working on uh, relating to how to do Slurm, which is your conventional batch queued environment, uh, but how to do that in a, in a cloud native environment on, uh, but on bare metal. So there's plenty of form for why and how people do Slurm in the cloud, and we'll briefly skip through that. But I just wanted to um, uh, talk about a couple of the driving motivations. I guess a lot of people will be familiar with this kind of siloed data center um, where we have um, hardware specifically uh, assigned to HPC, hardware for big data, the, the Hadoops and Sparks and what have you, and maybe hardware for AI and deep learning as well. And the thing that OpenStack brings us in, in the research computing space is this concept of consolidation. Um, but if we were to consolidate everything, then we also need to be able to run a Slurm service um, on this kind of cloud environment in order to bring HPC, AI, and big data hardware together under one, um, uh, one system. We need to be able to provide a kind of service for a batch queue as well. So this is by no means um, novel work. There is a huge amount of um, prior art in terms of creating Slurm in uh, cloud environments, ranging from um, the kind of snow globe environments where uh, there might be a four node Slurm cluster and it, it runs some uh, uh, basic MPI or, or hello world jobs um, up to these uh, sort of fairly um, dynamic and, uh, and fluid um, almost functions as a service approaches to um, queuing jobs and, um, and going off to create things. But when we are focusing on creating a, um, a service, um, I think that there's something interesting in this work, which is why I wanted to talk about it today. It's based on a set of very detailed discussions with the, um, the HBC services team at Cambridge University. They manage a, um, a set of uh, supercomputers, the largest of which is called uh, CSD3. It's one of the biggest in the UK. And, um, and so they have long and um, an extensive experience in how to and how not to um, uh, manage a, a service uh, for providing Slurm to a wide range of users. Uh, they were very patient with us and they put together a, a very useful set of requirements um, for if you want to provide this service, you need to be able to do this. And the team at Stack HBC were able to um, implement uh, something based on cloud native methods, but meeting the requirements of the, um, uh, the operational experience at Cambridge. So I've got a couple of things to talk about, but I guess that you can assume that all of the usual uh, features of a Slurm cluster are present here. Uh, time doesn't really give us the opportunity to go into any of these at depth. Um, all of this is open source. Um, it's based on OpenHPC v2 and CentOS 8. Uh, you can find everything on Galaxy or um, or um, our blog or other places. Uh, it, it does all the usual things that you would expect of a Slurm environment. It integrates with the, um, uh, the other services of your data center. Um, and it also integrates well with things like InfiniBand, bare metal compute, and high performance virtualization. So all of those things exist. Uh, I've got a couple of minutes to talk about the cool stuff. Um, first bit that um, we really liked and was, was probably the major uh, point from uh, operational experience was if I have a thousand nodes and there is a um, zero day vulnerability announced, I need to be able to patch those thousand nodes as fast as I possibly can. And running a playbook over a thousand nodes is it soon becomes unwieldy and um, a bit of a bottleneck. So the, there is a slightly different approach taken in this system in which we use image based deployments and those are triggered through an update process in which a high priority job jumps the queue um, in the um, in the batch scheduler. And, and we'll run in a, uh, a sort of a phased rollout across the system. Um, so we can say that uh, we have a, a concurrency of 10 nodes. It has to run on all the nodes. And at the front of the queue, when those nodes become available, Slurm will execute this job, which will then take the nodes out of the um, configuration, uh, perform a reboot, which actually uh, behind the scenes is an OpenStack re-image. 
brings back the node with the updated uh, master image installed on it, and then it rejoins the configuration um, more or less immediately. Uh, so this was one of the, the benefits of working with a team who had long experience of operating at scale is that they knew that this was a, the sort of approach that had to be taken and everything was shaped around fitting that. Uh, the other point that I wanted to show with you is what we can do if we deploy things in a cloud native way is that we can bring in some fairly cool other pieces, uh, stick them together using a sort of parameterized configuration deployment. Uh, so we can use things like the Prometheus node exporter on our compute nodes and um, Elasticsearch or Open Distro for collecting uh, job queue data uh, from the machine. And, and then we can actually link that together in order to provide to the users of the service um, dashboards of, um, of their jobs and the times in which they ran, which are then interactive in that they can click through uh, to a dashboard of node exporter telemetry, which is time boxed and, um, and only presenting the, uh, the compute nodes uh, that their job uh, was running on uh, for the duration of the job runtime. So the way that looks is um, if we have a look at the, uh, the presentation of the data that's gone into Elastic, uh, we can see the list of jobs that a user has run. And these, um, the URLs on the screen, uh, they are constructed into this fairly deep linked thing uh, down on the bottom, which um, my colleague Will has um, hopefully elaborated or annotated. Um, and then we can see uh, we can click through this this deep link into a dashboard which is created on the fly, which will then show things like the um, uh, typical node exporter stats. Uh, but you can see these red boxes, and that is where um, the job started and completed. Uh, so everything is in a fairly user friendly way. Um, the the telemetry, or the sort of the coarse grained uh, telemetry of uh, node exporter, is published back to users who can then see. What their, what their jobs were doing during the duration of the job. So it's a fairly user-friendly way of getting um, another view on performance telemetry in the system. Uh, the place where this is all running, uh, and a lot of the development work has been done in um, uh, at Cambridge, but also at another system, which is the Scalable Metal Service. And um, uh, this is a project we're working on with, um, with Vern Global, who have been providing um, hardware um, so what you might call second life or maybe third life hardware, uh, but we have 160 blades uh, for a bare metal compute farm and the system is available for what you might call good causes. So um, open source projects uh, that are interested in having access to um, compute resources, things like perhaps the, the CI node pools for um, open dev infra, um, but, but other things as well. Um, it's, it's running a bare metal cloud with um, a, a sort of a restricted trust tenancy service and um, and the idea is that um, that users uh, who are qualified and their projects vetted and approved can um, make make use of this service and um, uh, for their own good so the way this is done is um, the users get to create uh, bare metal vms or uh, bare metal instances or, or virtualized vms on their project but they don't get access to things like networks or routers or um, or other things, they, they simply get to create compute resource uh, for the system. Coming up next um, on the um, on the scalable metal service cloud, uh, we have um, the ability to create um, hypervisors out of the bare metal compute nodes, so that if there is a requirement or a sort of an overwhelming, overflowing urge to to create lots of VMs, uh, we can actually create hypervisors on the fly in service of those. Um, we've been doing a fair bit of work with the Blazar project to enable uh, projects to book, for example, 10, 10 bare metal nodes for 10 weeks or something like that, and then have access to that resource with a, a, a guaranteed commitment of availability. And we've also been working and evaluating the Adjutant project um, with our friends at the Mass Open Cloud. And I think Christy uh, Nicola is going to give a demo on Adjutant in the next session. So I think that's probably everything that my uh, my time will permit. Uh, a bit of a whistle stop, and I probably whistle stop, and I probably squeezed a bit too much into uh, into the time. Uh, but all of this is going on uh, with our system. Uh, the other item of note is that this is twenty kilometres away uh, in Iceland. It is truly um, boiling over with excitement.
So thanks everyone and any questions? Um, personally, I'd like to see the URL where you store the project. I'm going to stop recording, by the way. Uh, sure. Um, I'll, I'll post it into the, um, the